Hey guys, what's going on? In today's tutorial, I'm going to be walking you through how to install Django on a Raspberry Pi and be able to access it anywhere on your network or if you have a VPN set up anywhere across the world. Coming right up. So in today's tutorial, I actually want to go ahead and show you how to install this awesome framework. If you haven't heard about it and you are a Python lover, uh, it's called Django. And Django is a web development framework. Um, I've used it quite a bit to develop some things in the past. Uh, most of the applications I've developed are on my internal network that I use. Um, but anyways, Django is a great way to start getting into web development. Um, and today's episode i'm not going to walk you through how to use Django per se we'll do that in this in another episode uh, plus there's a lot of great tutorials from some others on youtube on that but what i will walk you through today is how to put it on a raspberry pi and you may be asking yourself well, what's the use case why would i want to put it on a raspberry pi now typically speaking i would put Django on my laptop and then just sort of run it locally from there however sometimes when i'm traveling or i'm away or I just you know want to develop like on a mobile phone or I want to develop on my iPad. I can't really do that because the Django installation is sitting on my laptop at home. The beauty about putting it on a Raspberry Pi is you can actually open up an SMB server and you can access your Django installation from pretty much anywhere and any platform because you're going to do most of your development in terminal. If you choose to use an IDE, that's fine. You can do that as well. But for the most part, to get started, you can do a lot of work in terminal. And then when you want to render your page, you can do it on any mobile browser or you can do it on a laptop. Um, if you're traveling across the world like I do quite a bit, you can go ahead and just uh, set up a VPN into your house. Um, I use something called PyVPN, which is cool. Um, but anyways, you can set up a VPN, log into your home network, and then you know browse and develop as if you're sitting at home just on another device. So let's go ahead and get started. So for those of you who don't know what a Raspberry Pi is, I will put a link in the description on, uh, you know, you can pick one up on Amazon, but essentially it's, it's a $35 computer that you can pick off of uh, Amazon. Now this is Canadian pricing, so it's a little bit higher, but I believe if you purchase it in the US, it's about $35 or so. Um, and you can buy these in all sorts of different kits. You can buy the standalone, you can buy with a case, uh, wires, GPIO cables, and a whole bunch of other stuff. If you really wanted to tinker with home automation as well, which we'll cover off in the, in the future, this is also another great tool to do it. And so really, you would just go ahead and you would plug it in like right over there. There is your LAN cable. It also has a Wi-Fi chip built in, and then you have your USB ports right there. So it's a really, really cool tool. And then you have your HDMI port right there if you wanted to connect it to a TV. And then it's also got your audio jack output as well. And so really, I mean, for 35 bucks or, you know, in this case, in Canadian currency, uh, 55 bucks or so, it's not a bad deal. These things do go on sale quite a bit. As you can see, at some point in time at Amazon, it got down to $45 and sometimes the kits are worth it. They go on a really cheap price. So I'll put a link of this in the description if you guys are interested. But let's go ahead and let me show you how to develop this or put this on a Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my terminal window here. And so the best way to get started is to go ahead and SSH into your Raspberry Pi. Now, I'm not going to show you how to install Raspbian, which is the OS that you need on your Raspberry Pi. Again, plenty of tutorials out there. I don't need to go and recreate the wheel. I just want to show you something where I found limited tutorials out there. Um, so that's what this is meant for. So we're going to go ahead and SSH into and my username is Pi. So when you get your Raspberry Pi, your default username is going to be Pi and your password is going to be Raspberry. Um, I haven't really changed the defaults yet because I've just set this up for exemplary purposes. I'm going to be changing all of this information anyways. So when I go ahead and do this, uh, basically I'm saying go ahead and SSH into my Raspberry Pi. It's going to ask me for my password, which I will put in Raspberry because that is my password. And now it's gone ahead and launched. So the Raspberry Pi, let me just make this a little bit bigger for us. So when I go ahead and look at the files in here, now this is a Linux based system. This is my, I'm gonna play around with different things, Raspberry Pi, I've got several of them at home. Some of them are more in a production setting like my home automation framework. Uh, but this one I just like to install things on and, and play around with. And so one of the things I found out is, you know, I tried to go ahead and just install Django off the bat onto it. And the challenge is though, it was hard for me to go ahead and access through my local network. So when I go ahead and I click on Raspberry, for example, I can now go ahead and access share. And I'll show you, I created a separate directory in root called share, called it Django projects, and I have all my stuff set up here. 
What I may go ahead and do and just cre is create something called ENV2 for demonstration purposes. So we'll do that in a second. But now when I go back to this, what I want to do is I want to go back into my root directory, which I just do like this. I hit LS and you'll see I've already got my directory called share. And I, and I specifically call this shares because I don't want to share everything on the Raspberry Pi to my local network. I just want to share things that I'm okay sharing. And this Django framework or this Django application that I'm going to build is fairly lightweight and it's meant for the family to use. So I'm totally cool with sharing that. So the next question you'd ask is, well, how do you create some of this stuff? And how do you make sure that it has the right permissions? All right, so in Linux, you want to run certain commands. So the first thing you want to do is you always want to make sure that you're going to go ahead and uh, update and upgrade any old packages. So you want to do sudo apt get update. And so once this gets done, then you're going to do the same thing, but you're going to say sudo apt get upgrade. So we'll wait for this to finish. And that's just basically going to make sure that it's going to grab the latest and greatest packages and nothing breaks with new packs. So I have a whole bunch of stuff that I have to upgrade. I'll just say yes. And I may just end up fast forwarding all of this stuff. All right, so now we're done. I probably should have done all that upgrades and updates before I started the video, but hey, that's how you learn, right? All right, so the next command we're gonna enter in to get the actual Samba package is sudo apt get install Samba, uh, Samba common bin. Now I've already got this, so it's gonna tell me that I've probably already got this, uh, which is the case, uh, but you can go ahead and do this. And so the next thing we want to do is you need to decide what you want to call your shared directory. So for example, in my case, I have, let me go back to the root. I've decided to call it share. You can call it whatever you want. And in order to execute that command to create that new share document or that share folder, sorry, you would go ahead and enter in uh, sudo make directory 177 slash share. Um, and the reason why you want to do that is, um, because the 777 basically means that anybody can go ahead and edit it. So you can change whatever permissions you feel you want to put there. And the one is just there so that it doesn't accidentally get deleted. So I've already got this, so it's not going to create it, which is fine. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the config file. So let me go ahead and clear this out. And the only reason why we're doing all of this is so that we can access this from like uh, another local computer. Uh, easily. You can access it either through terminal or through your uh, file management system. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do sudo and I use nano. You can use whatever editor you want. Samba and then smb.conf. And I'll leave, a, I'll leave this in the description, but you want to go ahead and add this at the end. And all this is basically saying is you want to, is you want to set these parameters for your share folder. So your path is your share folder which is right here uh, the next thing is you want to make sure yes it's all browsable um, and then this part here is very important i found that for some reason when i didn't have this in here it wouldn't let me access it through the file management system and so you basically have to force whenever it, whenever you're logging in you have to force it to log in as pi because that's what has a permission so uh, whatever your username is just replace that here with that so I'll put this little snippet of code in the description so you guys can just copy and paste it and make it easy for yourselves. And I'm not gonna save this, we'll get out of this. And so the last thing you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and add in a username to access this SMB platform. So I just said sudo uh, SMB password add pi as my username and when you hit that, it's gonna tell me what my password is. So this is where you basically set your password for your username Pi. I'm not gonna do this because I'm just leaving it as Raspberry for now. And then you can go ahead and reboot. And to do that, you would just type in sudo reboot. I'm not gonna push it because it'll reboot the Pi. And then you're good to go. So from that perspective, then you can go into your share folder. So let's do that. So once that's created and once everything's back up, you just CD into share. And I accidentally probably created something I shouldn't have, but I'll get rid of that anyways afterwards. All right, and this is where you're gonna go ahead and make a new folder. So I'm gonna do this from scratch as if Django Projects doesn't exist. I have a few things in there, so I'm gonna leave it. But we're gonna go ahead and create a brand new directory and we're just gonna say Django Tutorial. And sorry, this should say make dir Django Tutorial. All right, so now when I go into here, I can go CD Django Tutorial. I'll just star that. Of course, I need a big T. And so you're good. So now you're in this folder, but you got nothing in here. So now what you want to do is you want to set up a virtual environment. And to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to say virtual env 
and then we'll call it env2. And I want to make sure that when it's using Python, I want to make sure that it's using Python 3. And if you don't have virtual env, it's just a pip install virtual env and you can you can download it if you don't have it. You probably won't have it. So it's literally just pip install virtual env. And so once this gets done, it's going to go ahead and create that virtual environment for me. And so we're just going to wait for it to finish its its uh, installation. It's going to install setup uh, tools, pip and wheel. And after this, we need to go in and we need to go and install Django. And then what I'll do is I'll show you after we've installed Django, how do you actually go ahead and view it on your personal or your home network? There is a little trick that isn't um, obvious sometimes. So we'll go through that in a second. So you go LS and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, activate this. So to do that, you go source env2 bin activate. And all this means is now I'm going to go ahead and log into my virtual environment. And you'll see that you're in your virtual environment because it starts with env2 uh, over here. Otherwise before it just started with Pi. So that's how you know you're in your virtual environment. And just as a side, uh, if you want to get out of it, you just write in deactivate. And now you go back to starting with Raspberry Pi here. All right, so let's go back into it. All right, so now that I'm in here, uh, I wanna go ahead and do a pip install. So let's first go ahead and see what's in here. And to do that, you would do pip freeze. And that's gonna tell you what packages you already have installed here. This is telling me I got nothing installed. Perfect, that's what I want. So now to install Django, I would go pip install Django. And so what it's going to do is it's going to install the latest version. You can always specify which version you want. You can do pip install Django equals equals and, and then the version number that you're looking for. But it's going to add in SQL parse. It's going to add in PYTZ and it's going to add in Django. And we'll do another pip freeze after this just to show you that those are the only packages that are installed in here. And if you guys are wondering why I put this in a virtual environment, check out my tutorial. Uh, I'll link it above and in the description on why you would want to use a virtual environment versus just putting this directly into your Pi. It's a, it's a big, sometimes it could be a big risk of putting it directly into the Pi or into your computer for that matter. You always want to set up a virtual environment first, but check out that tutorial. So let's go ahead and do a pip freeze now against this. And it's going to show you that I've got Django, if I've got PYTZ and I've got SQL parse. All right, so let's get out of this or let's clear this out for now. And now that I have Django, Django has this really cool thing called Django admin. And so when I do Django admin, it tells me all these different commands I can go ahead and do. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and start a new project. And when I start a new project, uh, that basically means that, so let's say I want to build a website. I can say something like start website or start project website. And then in there, I can have specific apps like my shopping app, or I can have my calculator app or my calendar app. And that's where you do um, start app in that case. All right, so let's go ahead and do Django admin start project and we're going to call it, let's just call it my site for fun. All right, and what it's going to do is it's going to create a folder called my site. So we're going to go CD into my site and it's basically called, got this thing called manage.py and it's got my site. All right, so today we're just going to be focusing on rendering the web page from a, from a different computer to the Raspberry Pi. All right, so in order to do that, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to CD into the second My Site folder and we're going to edit something called settings.py. So I'm going to type in sudo nano settings.py. And what you want to do is you want to scroll down to uh, this thing called allowed hosts. And I just put a star in here. And that just means that anything on this specific network can go ahead and access it. So I do that star and that's it. And so now I'm going to back out of this. I want to save it. Yes. All right, and that's all you need to do. And so now in order to go ahead and start this web page, let me go back. You're going to use a command called manage.py. So you're going to use manage.py quite a bit in Django. It's like probably one of the most used files uh, aside from other things like templates and urls.py and, and all that other stuff, which we may get into later on, but I really I want to focus on how do you deploy this on a Raspberry Pi. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do Python manage.py and we're gonna do run server. So I'm gonna show you what happens when I just do run server. Now, anytime that you launch something like a new server for this, it's gonna always open at port 8000. If I were to just go into my computer as so, so instead of going into, you know, localhost would be the localhost to the Raspberry Pi. But we already know that we have a 
uh, host IP for this, which is the 192.168.1.198. And then you would just go to port 8000. So when I just go ahead and do that, let's try that out and see what happens. So I type 192.168.198 and then I go to 8000. What you're going to see is it's not working. And you and you know, I, I struggled with this for a little bit and I was trying to figure out why it wasn't working. Well, there's this little special command that you have to get uh, that you have to set up for this to work. All right, so let me just clear that. So what you need to do actually is when you're going to run this, you have to run this in a specific way. You have to run uh, python manage.py run server 0.0.0.0 and then your port number because this tells your computer that uh, you can access this from anything on your network. So when I run it this way, we're going to wait for this to load. And now I'm going to bring back my browser and you see that now when I hit return, it actually runs. So I'm actually running this off of my Mac and I'm going into this local IP port 8000 to now get a hold of my Django installation. And so really that's how you would go ahead and run Django. And I'll just show you one more quick thing. And that is how do you create a super user and get into the admin profile? Before I do that, let me walk you through another thing in manage.py where you have to uh, run something called migrations. And what that means is it's going to sync up everything in your Django code to your database. So the beauty of Django is it will go ahead and automatically apply all these different changes to your database on its own without you having to go and touch your database. And now this is using the SQL light in the background. Later, maybe in another tutorial, I'll show you how to change that to you know, MySQL server or something else in the future. But um, in order to in order to access your Django, so now that I've got this, I mean, like, what am I supposed to do with this, right? You can actually go to something called forward slash admin, which is one of the apps that are installed in Django. And when you do that, oh, I actually closed my server. So I'll open my server back up in a second and I'll show you. But when you do that, it's going to ask you for a username and password. And you don't have a username and password yet. So we're going to do something called uh, Python manage.py create super user. And what it's going to do is going to ask me for a username. So I'll leave it as pi. I'll just leave it blank. I don't want to put in an email address and I'll put in raspberry as my password. And it's going to ask you to verify. Now without doing this step, you can't really, oh, it's too common. Yeah, I'll bypass it. I mean, this is for demonstration purposes anyways. So we've gone ahead and created it. So let me go ahead and run my server again and I'll show you when I go into the admin panel it's actually going to ask me for my username and password so let's go back and bring this in and so now it has this nice little login and the authentication is built into Django which is what I really like so I'm going to type in pi then I'm going to type in raspberry and now I can actually go ahead and log in and do a whole bunch of different things to it I can you know change different settings on my groups my users uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff change my password and so that's really how you set up Django on a Raspberry Pi. And, and the beauty, like I said about this, is I just VPN into my whole home network and I could be in Europe uh, and I can be developing with no issues uh, at home if I don't have my development laptop. Uh, sometimes I take my work laptop with me, uh, but I can still, I'm still able to VPN in with that as well. Um, and I don't want to carry multiple laptops around. So this is a really cool way to do that. And, and I mean, the uh, cost to get in is so cheap, like $35. Um, you don't even have to put it in a case if you don't want to, but a case is like five bucks. So really an ethernet cable, uh, a power cable and, and the Raspberry Pi in the case itself will all run you under probably $40 US. Uh, and if you get a kit, sometimes they go on sale for like 30, 30, $40 as well. The, like the entire kit with a whole bunch of other things in there. So this is a great way to go ahead and get started with Django. Uh, we may do some more tutorials on Django in the future, but uh, I felt this is a, a great way for a developer to go in and um, and even practice Django on a computer that's not going to, you know, break their system if you start installing packages that you shouldn't. Uh, typically, like I said, whether you're on a computer or a Raspberry Pi, always, always, always use a virtual environment. But other than that, that was sort of it today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, comment, like, subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye.